hey guys welcome to my youtube channel thank you so much for all the congratulatory messages on my instagram page i really appreciate i'm so excited and um elated um mixed feelings emotional um just name it i'm filled with so much joy um today i'm 37 weeks pregnant with my twins and um i'll be having them tomorrow yeah so you can imagine how i feel right now i'm going to be talking about my journey my, my journey of five years of trying to conceive and losing my pregnancies and you know the struggles and everything i went through in the past five years nine months to it took me nine months to make this video because for every time I tried to make a video, I couldn't get past five minutes without bawling my eyes out. Yeah, so um, I'm 37 weeks pregnant today. Um, I meet my babies tomorrow because um, I've been booked for delivery. So I just said, you know what, let me just, let me just do this and get done with it, <laughs> you know. If I cry, fine, I'll clean my eyes. Wherever I can continue, I'll stop, I'll post it like that. So I got married in 2019, November, in hopes that I was going to get pregnant immediately and start having my kids. Um, I had this very, I'm a perfectionist, so I had this very planned out life for myself on when I'm having my kids, how many I was going to have, and you know, when I'm going to stop having kids and all of that. About five months after my wedding, I realized I wasn't getting pregnant, you know, so I sought for medical help. Um, I went to see a doctor and told him, oh, I got married in, you know, November last year. And for five months, I've not been able to conceive. I'm not sure what the problem is. I need to get checked. You know, we need to get checked and all of that. Let's see if there's any you know, on the line issue <laughs> so you can tackle it in time and I can, you know, get right into it. So I saw a doctor and then um, ran a few tests with the doctor, asked me a few questions and he told me um, from the test I did and from the examination he did on me, um, it's looking like I had PCOS. So um, that was the first time I was hearing about PCOS. I had never heard about PCOS in my life. You know, that was the first time. So I was confused, like, what is PCOS? I had to go to Google, start researching, uh, you know, trying to find out what PCOS was. Uh, so it was a bit um, confusing and conflicting because there were different symptoms, symptoms, like some symptoms I saw online, I wasn't having them you understand and then some symptoms the doctor i told the doctor about it was totally different from in fact it was such a complex it was such a complex them diagnosis because from what the doctor told me no two cases are the same so he examined me and came up with a result and told me that oh um i wasn't ovulating like i should every month so in a whole year of 12, in a space of 12 months, like a full year, I could possibly ovulate maybe two, twice or three times. So you can imagine 12 months in a, in a year and then you ovulate um, three times out of those 12 months. So it's going to be very difficult for you to catch that particular, you know. So it was it was um, such a roller coaster for me. I went into research and started, you know, trying to figure out what um i could do to end that you know or to stop that situation so i was giving medications to induce ovulation because i wasn't ovulating and then on the six months um after taking my meds i got pregnant that was that was that was really encouraging i was happy and excited that okay thank god i'm not stuck in that you know situation anymore and then as time went on, the pregnancy progressed very well up until the fifth month of pregnancy. Um, I was sleeping one night and then my water broke. So I woke up in the pool of my, I mean, the bed soaked with fluid. 
it was during covid um there was no we weren't really doing you know detailed antenatal classes it was just um very very irregular visits to the doctor's office covid was on the rise at that time so when i saw that happen i assumed i bedwetted actually because I didn't feel any way. I know that in pregnancy, when your water breaks, you go into labor and then you start feeling pain. Maybe you sport, you start bleeding and then you rush to the hospital. But when I woke up in the morning, I was okay. I was not feeling any way. I wasn't feeling pain, but the bed was, you know, soaked with fluid. So I assumed it was, I bedwetted, to be honest. That was what I thought. So I said, ah. Is this a pregnancy symptom? Maybe it's urine and all of that, but it wasn't. It was actually my fluid from, you know, my womb that was expelled. So I ignored it, you know, and went about my day. Um, sadly, went about my day for about nine days to ten to two weeks. Yeah, I think it was about two weeks. However, what I noticed along the line was that whenever I do something if i cough or if i sneeze i feel that fluid coming out on its own so i'm like is this a pregnancy symptom or is this what what exactly is this you know when i sneeze i feel that fluid come out when i you know and it was covid i couldn't even go to the hospital like i don't know why i didn't just you know reach out to the doctor i'm like oh, i'm not in pain okay maybe it's my own type of you know i know pregnancies that people have different symptoms asked my mom ah did you have any of these when you were pregnant for your children she said no i asked my cousins who had kids if they had any similar they said well towards the end of their pregnancy they couldn't hold their urine and all of that so i just reached i just moved on with my life you understand and then i went for my appointments and when I got to the doctor and the P, you know how they do the ultrasound and all of that, he put the probe on my tummy and he was like, there's no fluid in your sac. What's the problem? Have you been leaking fluids? Did you ever notice fluids coming out of your body at any point in time? And I'm like, yes, I did, but I thought it was urine. I didn't know it was my amniotic fluid. And he's like, I'm sorry, we can't let you go. I can't even let you step out of this place. You have to go straight to the hospital because um, there's no iota of fluid in your sack. My heart skipped. I was scared, like dead scared. So I called my husband. I told him the situation of things. I told him that this is what the doctor says. He said I should go and pack my bags and come back to the hospital. That I cannot, he can't let me go. So I was admitted in the hospital and then the doctor told me um, they had to run some tests to see if I have an infection, you know, for the fact that this fluid has been gradually coming out of my body for the past two weeks. They need to do some tests to be sure there is no infection that could harm me or the baby. So they carried out the test and the results came out. Unfortunately, he told me that, okay, I have an infection and we have to terminate the pregnancy. I'm like, what? I can't terminate my pregnancy no matter what. He was like, you've been out of fluid for over two weeks. This baby has not been, been, you know, that, that fluid that protects the baby hasn't been there for two weeks. Um, chances are that when this baby is born, you know, they may have some birth defects, they may have some, you know, irregularities, heart issues, and I don't want to put myself, I should do he won't want me to put myself through that trauma of raising a child with, you know, all that. The weird part of it now, the weird part of the situation was that I wasn't going into labor. Everything was, the, the baby's heartbeat was so strong. The only issue was the infection. So the doctor told me that, okay, what he's going to do is that he's going to monitor the rate at which the, I don't know the medical terms, but basically in a layman's word, there are numbers he has to watch after doing that test for infection. So if it keeps going up, it means I'll be at risk and then it could affect my womb or I won't be able to carry subsequent pregnancies in the future. So he was going to check those numbers every eight hours weeks, and he kept checking checking those numbers it kept going up but this child 
was still okay. Heartbeat, labor wasn't coming. I was normal. I wasn't running temperature. So, um, he came and told me the implication of things and said, um, if this man, if these numbers get to this particular, um, range or you know certain level i'm gonna either get septic or um um lose my life or destroy my womb and da -da 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 -da. it was a very hard decision for me and my husband i'm like how can i you know terminate i can hear this heartbeat was loud like the baby was chilling as much as it was a girl so as much as she was squashed she was squashed in the womb because there was no fluid. Um, she was her heartbeat was so strong, you know, because um, so the doctors told me ordinarily this baby is supposed to, you know, be in distress and then gradually my body would expel her naturally. But this wasn't happening for two weeks. However, my life was at risk. It got to the point where I started running temperature, still having that feverish feeling. And he said, Madam, you're, you're putting your life at risk. The more you hold on to this baby, the more you put yourself at risk. Please let this go. So I was induced and I went into labor and had her obviously stillborn. Um, and that was the end of that pregnancy. It was such a lonely you know journey uh, well i i spoke to a couple of friends who were on that journey with me but you know it's not it wasn't enough like i just needed more succor and support you know so um i let go of that pregnancy and that was the end one year passed trying and i wasn't getting pregnant it was so frustrating it was so devastating I almost lost my mind i was like why do i have to go through such you know situation just to you know get pregnant what what could, what could be the issue and all of that finally in um 20 so i lost my pregnancy my first pregnancy in august 2020 and then in 2022 so throughout 2021 i wasn't taking in and in 2022 i got pregnant in 2022 after so much trial i got pregnant again and this time around i registered in a hospital i told the doctor my history and explained to him that this is it you know i've lost a baby i've lost a baby in the past um i don't know what the problem was but my previous doctor suspected you know maybe weak cervix or something they couldn't figure it out so they tagged me as high risk in this new hospital i registered in and told me um they were going to monitor the pregnancy and then at a certain week or at 15 weeks to 20 weeks they're going to um um, do a surgery so put a sac large just in case that was the possible situation as to or the possible reason as to why my water broke in the first pregnancy everything was going well pregnancy was okay i didn't have any issues no complications up until the 19th week um i noticed i was leaking fluid again this time it wasn't a gush so i was just leaking fluid and i said okay this is a sign this does not look like i mean why should i leak i'm not pressed i don't feel like easing myself then something is something is clearly wrong so i quickly rushed to the hospital and told my doctor that see this is what i noticed i noticed that um i was leaking fluid and i just needed to come and get checked just to be sure everything is fine the doctor told me to lie down on the examining or whatever table let him check what was going on he checked did an ultrasound and checked my womb and said okay there's still fluid in you around your baby 
he now did a transvaginal scan it was at this point i knew i realized that my life was about to <laughs> i don't know how i felt so he checked opened my cervix and all of that and said madam i can see the hand of your baby coming out of your body i can't let you go home i'm like what why how how I don't feel any pain there's no blood there's no spotting why would you why would my baby's hand be coming out just like that how besides i told you guys i was high risk from the get go because i had already had a you know previous miscarriage and you guys said you were going to monitor and put a sacrilege you know a cervical sacrilege at a certain um period of time during the pregnancy why wasn't that done why didn't my doctor you know follow up on that what's what is this what's this story you guys are telling me i can't let you go home the hand of your baby is already out of your body i can see it immediately i opened your cervix to check i saw the baby's hand so you have to be admitted immediately for us to stop labor my heart broke i'm like barbara the second time no it's not possible god i'm not uh, i'm i i i i i but I couldn't, you know when you can't cry, you don't know what to do. I was just confused. I called my husband who was at work and told him this is a situation of things. I've been told I have to be admitted and all of that. <sighs> so I was admitted in the hospital. Um, they gave me, they were giving me anti-labor to stop labor from progressing. Still no pain. Doctor was asking me, are you in pain? Are you having lower back pain? Are you you're not spotting, you're not bleeding? What kind of what kind of silence? You know, if at least I have a sign, like okay, my waist is paining me, you know how labor labor comes or how it works. There was nothing, there was no sign. I was myself, I drove myself to the hospital. I didn't feel anything. I was like my normal self. So what exactly is this? My husband was so mad because the doctor who was in charge of my 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 personal doctor was you know negligent in this case um this was, was clearly human error nigerian factor which i'll talk about in my subsequent videos i mean you have a patient and you're supposed to be monitoring you know her history and everything but you weren't you were nonchalant i was just coming for natal you do a scan and tell me to go home so 2024th of december 2022 i was just you know waiting taking my medications trying to stop labor from occurring and then on a day after christmas on christmas night yeah about 11 45 pm when it was almost boxing day so it was almost 26 on christmas night i started feeling pain cramps and i called the nurse and told her please can you check my baby i'm i'm feeling some kind of way ah god my heart sank i'm like god not again for the second time why me you know why why do i have to go through these two times why 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 i had so many questions that i couldn't answer anyway i started bleeding like I told him, my sister was in, in the room with me. My husband stepped out to go and buy something from the supermarket around. And my sister was in my room with me. And then I just turned and told her, I'm feeling something trickle down my legs. Is there blood? And she said, yes, there's blood. Oh, I knew that the baby was coming. So I called my husband to please leave whatever you're doing and come back to my room. I called the doctor and told them that, um, I'm having contractions because I was having slight cramps so they wheeled me into the labor room and then it happened everything happened so fast so this time around I wasn't induced like the first time everything happened so fast and in 30 minutes my second daughter was out <laughs> ah god I wept I wept my heart was heavy I wept I bawled my eyes out I'm like 
god how can you allow this to happen to me two times why does it have to be me like what exactly is going on how can i go go through labor twice for two children and then you i don't go home with anyone alive why do i have to go through postpartum my breast was already leaking with milk i was lactating my body was had gone through wear and tear my tummy was bulgy without baby i had to jesus christ i do not wish this predicament on my and on enemy I, at this point i was completely you know devastated um i didn't know what to do i just you know um we were discharged the next day from the hospital i went back you know home to start life again i was i put myself into i soaked myself in my work you know that was that was my that was my only escape from thinking or getting frustrated or depressed and all of that so i was like you know what this was it i was just walking on overdrive get to work soak myself in work go home sleep wake up in the morning do what i have to do get to work decorate cakes go back home this is what i was doing to you know bring myself out of that depressed mode my friend was a little helpful you know i would go out she would come pick me up um take me out you know try to talk me out of it and she tried her best to be honest but still i was not myself ah god then again i said i'm not gonna do this anymore i can't do this again the following year i entered a new year in you know sadness i was hot so backstory right now in the midst of this while i was depressed and trying to figure out what was you know wrong where um where i'm getting it wrong or what we can do to stop these multiple miscarriages one day i was just on youtube you know glancing through and then i stumbled on a video by apostle joshua selman and the title of the video was when god is silent so i watched that video in detail and it sort of lifted my spirit um it gave me an understanding that you know because i had lost faith in god to be honest and i'm like i'm not i didn't kill jesus <laughs> i'm not the one that killed jesus why do i have to go through this torture do you understand god where did i where have i gotten it wrong so when I stumbled on that video when God is silent and I watched it and I got my spirit got so lifted after watching that video. It gave me a different perception about my waiting place and why God wants you to wait sometimes. To be honest, I skipped a lot of drama in between losing these pregnancies. I skipped a lot of explanation because if I have to give details of things I went through both spiritually and physically, um, this video is going to run into several minutes. Yeah, so I was not just fighting a physical battle, which is losing the pregnancies physically. Physically, um, I was also spy fighting spiritual battles. Um, I'm born a Catholic, right? So. I mean, born Catholic, my parents, my dad and my mom are serial Catholics. So you know how we do our things now, very jelly, you know, nothing too aggressive, nothing too... But when my battles started, <laughs> ah, God, when these battles came, nobody... This aspect, I'm going to leave it for another different video altogether i fought on seen battles that i didn't believe you know would occur i didn't believe used to occur or people used to experience I used to hear hear say oh this one that one when it was my turn i'm like okay so this is real it was crazy because after i watched that video by apostle selman joshua selman 
it gave me an insight of um why why god why god wants you to wait so sometimes it's not you know we are humans and then we have this human side of us that will not understand blame god god why me this is not what you said in your word you said you're gonna you know all that stuff but sometimes god just wants to you know give you the set or let those setbacks happen so that he can prepare you for what's ahead <laughs> i soaked myself into prayer like i went over and beyond i said this thing right that's happening to me no i'm not gonna give it another chance guess what my third pregnancy i lost it fast forward to the following year 2024 um 2023 was it 2023 yes 2023 i got pregnant again this time around at 10 weeks i didn't have to get to i didn't have to get to um 20 weeks like the first and second one i got pregnant again and at 10 weeks i went for a scan and the doctor told me the baby had the baby's heart beat the baby's heart had stopped beating <laughs> i'm like you know what <laughs> i'm done here i'm done with this journey i'm done with trying to get pregnant i'm done with trying to pull myself through these rigors it's obvious you know maybe this thing is not for me or maybe my body can't you know just keep a pregnancy it's time for me to move on with my life or find other means and all of that so <sighs> this one didn't hurt as bad as the previous like i said i was numb so i lost that baby um i didn't believe doctor told me oh the the, the heart there's no heartbeat i said no it's not possible let's give it time he said okay no problem i'm gonna give you two weeks go home let's see if any magic is going to happen come back in two weeks let's check again maybe i may be wrong and all of that so when i got home um during that two weeks time i was just waiting and saying praying i'm like god this my baby's heartbeat can't be there's no way this child i'm carrying would not have a heartbeat it's not possible um do your work i've tried god pity me <laughs> i'm exhausted physically mentally psychologically and otherwise i can't do this no more if you don't want me to have a child just tell me you don't want me to have a child but please stop putting me through this pain this is what i was telling god because there was no other explanation anyway in that two in that two week wait um, before i even went for the next ultrasound scan with my doctor um the miscarriage started i started bleeding and then I knew when the baby was about to come out, went to the restroom, wriggling in pain, struggling, you know, trying to pass the baby out. And then, ah, I felt a very sharp pain. I knew that was it. I put my hand on that and caught the baby. I'm like, okay, this is it. And the relief that came after, same thing, postpartum. You know not as bad as the previous but i still had to bleed and all of that so ah god so that was it so at this point i told my husband i'm not doing this no more i'm sorry i've tried my body has been through so much wear and tear i think it's time to throw in the towel because uh, maybe we should look for other options and he's like what other option do we have i said you can find someone to carry this baby but not me because the pressure on me, the stigma on me, both physically and mentally, it's too much. I can't do this again. Let's look for a surrogate to carry this child, to carry our children. So he was okay with it. He agreed. He said, okay, let's let's start walking towards that. And then I started going around. Um, I lost this baby in 2020, 2023, April. Yeah, 2023 April, I lost the baby. So I started making inquiries, looking, talking to doctors and hospitals that offer surrogacy options and, you know, trying to get every information I need. Um, around November 20, 
23 of same year um, I came back with we had so many options right it was so expensive and all of that my cousin even offered because of how expensive it was she was like babs let me carry for you and I didn't even tell my husband this part I'm sure he'll be if he watches this video he'll be seeing it for the first time so my cousin offered to be my surrogate and that was so so that was so so amazing of her like how can you even decide to she was like it's okay let her be my surrogate and all of that god i bawled my eyes out Then she told me that i was so excited but i didn't think too much of it i was still weighing other options and then in december of 2023 while we were preparing to start the surrogacy journey, I got pregnant. I'm like, no, I was scared. I was uncertain. I was like, no, I know I'm going to lose this one. I can't deal. Do you understand? There's no way this one is going to stay. I mean, I've lost three children, so I cannot even try to do this again. I was so scared. I registered in the hospital told my doctor about it i'm like i'm scared i can't do this you know i'm definitely going to lose this one and he's like no we're going to monitor it we're going to make sure everything is okay just hang in there oh god anyway so after um six weeks i went for my six weeks six weeks ultrasound scan and then the doctor told me you're having twins like what twins no it's not possible my womb could not carry one two is going to be difficult there's no way i'll be able to carry twins to term because i've tried this in the past with one and it did not end well please i can't do this like i was so so scared i mean if i was losing pregnancies with just one baby right What's the probability that my womb will be able to carry two? Because, sorry, according to previous diagnosis, it was they were saying that my cervix was incompetent. Do you understand? And this is the weight of the baby that was causing me to dilate and lose these pregnancies. Physical diagnosis, in quotes, right? So, what's the possibility or what's the guarantee that? I'll be able to carry two babies it was so hard for me i was scared so the doctor put me through told me oh at 13 weeks we're gonna do a surgery we're gonna do this we're gonna do everything it's not a guarantee it's 50 50 but let's see how it goes but we'll do everything we need to do to keep these babies in i said okay i thank god i was excited i said you know going through informations about twin pregnancy the best possible way to prevent miscarriage in twin pregnancies and all of that yeah so um here we are 37 weeks i'm having my babies tomorrow and i cannot believe this is it i can't believe i, I got to this stage in pregnancy this is the first time i'm getting to 37 weeks um it's so I'm so overwhelmed. I um, have mixed feelings. I'm uncertain. I don't know. I don't know how to act. I'm so excited and thankful to God for making this pregnancy, you know, turn out this way without any disaster. Um, I'm going to talk about a few things I feel like people should, you know, know. I know in this part of Africa, we are mostly used to keeping things to ourselves and not sharing our problems with somebody else, especially things that have to do with infertility or trying to conceive or having, you know, these rare conditions. Um, in my, throughout my journey, you know, of TTC, I was kind of alone. Yeah, I was alone because I had so many questions. I had a thousand and one questions, but I did not know who to ask. I didn't know how to ask or where to get the right information from. I tried speaking to a couple of people, but I didn't know how to, you know, open up to them to tell, to ask, like, have you been in such situations? Apart from my close friends 
who had not been in this, in this situation, it was very difficult for, you know, nobody was talking about, I knew there were a couple out there who were trying to conceive, but nobody was, nobody was saying anything. Do you get, there was no, everybody was just keeping their things to themselves, the struggle. Uh, it, it really frustrated me because I was looking for answers right i was confused i i needed to speak up i needed people to tell their story and which is why I, I i decided to make this video to be honest i'm like i don't want any i won't wish my my predicament on anyone and i wish people would speak more of their struggles right i wish people would talk more about the things they go through while you know after marriage while trying to conceive i found solace in facebook groups right foreign facebook groups where you have white women who are so open in fact in fact that was the most effective you know help i i mean i got like the information from these groups they are made up of 95 percent of white women and few blacks but these women come out talk about their situations tell you what they did to prevent this you know what's the measures they took to stop this from happening again you understand but in africa it's a different ball ball game it's like you're going through the whole thing on your own nobody understands you instead you, instead you you end up getting the the worst you know reactions from people you you end up getting stigmatized by what people say to you because they're trying to conceive you know questions womb watchers that would, you post a picture and next thing they're asking you or you know go give your husband um picking with all those all those kind of things and all of that like people need to talk about their experiences more often with other people i feel like as much as we all want to be private about our lives there comes a time where you just need to you know come out of your shell and talk to someone who has been through what you've been through um i'm so thankful for my friends who are there for me throughout this journey i'm so thankful for my mom and siblings my husband um i'm thankful to everyone who you know was there to support me genuinely while i i embarked on this journey it's not been easy to be honest um I always say this um it's easier to you know talk about a situation when you haven't been through it than you know when you actually walk in this person's a part in in, the, in someone sh someone who has experienced such how do i put it so it's easier it's easier to speak on a, so someone's situation when you haven't walked the person's shoes um the most devastating part of me of trying to conceive for me was the stigmatization that came with it um the backlash the assumptions the um um the side talks i'm gonna leave that for another video entirely um i feel like um, that's one of the reasons why most people do not come out to talk about their predicaments um i went through so much you know i i experienced i mean this journey gave me a different perception about life in general it gave me a different perception about people it gave me a different perception about family guys what i experienced right in the hands of of humans on this journey is what um, I don't wish on an enemy um, I still struggle every day to find a place in my heart to just you know move on and forgive and but I feel like sometimes people know what they are doing you know because um, anyway I'll leave that for the next video so um conclusively i want to give hope to the hopeless to i know there's someone 
probably watching this video who, who has been on their own journey um, I would say keep the faith you know trust God he's not asleep trust me God is not asleep sometimes he wants to do things his own way and we'll be dying and crying and you know begging him you know sometimes it's not just it, when people tell me when I used to get hair talks like or hear comments like just relax you would I, it can be very annoying it can be very very pissing to be honest just relax it will happen it will happen when you're less anxious it will it's not that easy to relax when you've lost three children what's what are you relaxing for tell me do you understand but for me it was at the point when i said you know what i'm done and i was 101 percent relaxed like I, i'm like i'm not gonna do this again i'm not gonna go on this journey again and that's when it happened so i feel like god wanted to do things his own way god has a plan for you yeah sometimes you know it may take longer than five years some people have been on, on the journey for seven years some people have been on the journey for 10 years and have still not gotten a solution to their problems and they're still you know asking questions um i would say i would say look for you know go on your physical journey like a physical journey i mean is like trying to find out the physical solution to what your problems are or what your problem is or what you what's what what you don't know about medically so i would say follow up with your doctor secondly please do not neglect the spiritual angle i kid you not if you if you if, if someone should tell me eh <laughs> if someone should tell me I, sh I, I should be talking about spirituality as at five years ago if someone should have told me that I'm gonna be talking about spirituality five years ago I would look the person in the face and tell them you lie because I mean I just I was that person that would just wake up in the morning say my simple prayer you know thank you Jesus blah 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 and I just go about my day and have everything easy but when i got to this point in my life and i saw that um my head was about to go i'm talking about my head i'm not talking about pregnancy now i was about to be taken removed from the surface of this earth that was when i knew that there are two types of prayers right a or b it can't be in between you either choose <laughs> you either choose a or you choose b so please don't neglect the spiritual aspect of this focus on the physical walk towards you know getting the you know talking to the right people and getting help but do not neglect the spiritual aspect because i kid you not it's sometimes it's deeper than you think um talk to people i wish you all the best i'm um, using my twins as a point of contact to anyone who's trying to who's been trying to conceive I pray that God answers your prayers. I pray that God would wipe away those silent tears you've been crying and soaking your pillows all night. I pray that God is going to bring joy to your family or to your friend. If you have a sister or a cousin who is going through this, I honestly pray that God is going to give you double for your trouble. And um, no matter where you find yourself, please hang in there put yourself together um thank you so much for watching to this point i didn't want to make this video so long you know but <laughs> somehow i'll just flow in and talk in and i appreciate you for getting if you got to the end of this video i really really appreciate you uh, please do not forget to subscribe to this channel it's a business page yeah my usual cake videos but I'm gonna just juggle up everything in here it's not that deep i just couldn't start creating a new youtube page for this video so yeah whatever it is subscribe i'm gonna be talking about other topics you know on this channel as well as everything you can see here already thank you so much for watching um, fans for subscribing thank you for getting to this point of the video um i appreciate please do not forget to subscribe to 
um, this channel I'll be coming up with more videos like my bet video my yeah so expect a whole lot more here you know twin pregnancy you know talks and all of that um, thank you so much bye